Okay, so in the previous video, we broke up our form into three different screens. Now in this video, we're actually going to customize those screens to be more user-friendly for our users. Okay, so in this video, we're actually going to go ahead and customize our three different modes uh, for our form. So as you can see here, we have the view mode, and that's showing the photo, description, all this other good stuff. And if I go into edit mode, I need the ability to edit this photo. So that's one of the items that we have to fix. But it looks exactly the same as the view mode. So let's go ahead and switch things around a bit. And then the same is true for new. So if I go in and try to create a new item, I can put a new title, a new description. And actually, location is not an option for new. That's something that once it's submitted, uh, we want them to change. So let's go ahead and modify our three different forms to to be able to take advantage of having three separate screens. Because now you can have better control and you can add some different logic now that you have act, um, the ability to modify those three. Now, the first thing that we have to do is this photos field. This is problematic and this is a known issue. So for this photos field, if I go into uh, select that photos column, so column settings, and then click edit, we have this as a type picture. And the reason for that is because it is a picture and then, you know, being of that type, when you're in the list view, you guys should see the photo of the URL that you're referencing. But the problem is, is that this needs to be a hyperlink because in the Power Apps form, there is no way to edit that hyperlink form because of the different types. So we're going to change this type to hyperlink and then we're going to click save. And now we're going to lose those photo thumbnails that we see in the view, but that position us to edit that field now. But just by changing that and I look at my Power Apps form, I still don't have the text box. So I have to go in and customize the form. So let's go ahead and jump into studio to do that. So as this is loading, what I'm going to do is there's a, a few tips and tricks that we're going to have to do in order to make that photo field work. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, let's go ahead and fix that in our new screen. So let's go ahead to our new screen. Let's collapse everything else. And let's go ahead and adjust the form to what needs to happen for when someone's creating a new item. So the first thing we need to do is fix this photos field. So let me just select my form go into photo and now you see the option where before this was a photo icon now that we switched the column type to hyperlink we have the hyperlink icon and we have a different set of options so here I want them to be able to edit the URL and sometimes this is this acts weird so let me deselect this photo and reselect it oops I selected a data card so reselect it and let's go ahead and move this guy up so now I have the hyperlink option and I want them to be able to edit that URL. So that's going to uh, enable the edit piece to that. Now, uh, as far as the location, we don't want them to modify the location and we don't need this data card here in the new view. And, and really that's all we need. So let me zoom in a little bit. So it's really just these four fields, right? Now for the description field, we want that to be multi-line text. So we want them to be able to edit that multi-line, give them enough real estate. And now we can actually grow this. Actually, let's put the description at the bottom, right? Because we want to grow that description field and we don't want to push down the cost field. So let's just kind of grow this out. And now there is enough real estate for them to have efficient enough space to put in the description field, the title, photo, and then the cost, right? So that one's done. So I think we're good with that. So that's our news screen. So now if we go into the edit screen, what we want to do is still to have them. So once an item is submitted, they should have the ability to edit all the fields. So let's go ahead and modify that. So let's just select our form control, go into select. Again, let's just deselect photos and then re-add it. And now this should come in. It's, it's weird when I re try to re-add it, it puts in that data card. So let's put let's scroll this to the top. So now we have title photo, uh, the description, the same deal. It's just give them enough real estate for the description. And let's slide that down to the bottom one. And then the location field, this is something new. So in edit mode, they'll be able to edit the location. In new mode, we're going to hide it completely. So that's fine. And then we have this uh, status field. So I added this status field in between videos. 
and really this is something that is set when um, this is something that is set through the flow so if you built a flow behind this once it's submitted it will show you the submitted status and then we can route it for approval then we have flagged this as approved and then we have the fulfillment uh, part of the process you know ship these out whatever and then they are coming here and flag it as ship so what we can do with the status field because this is not something that the user should be changing uh, per se until it gets to like the ship status we want to make this read only so we want to select this initially and what you can do and here's the cool thing about power apps and I'm still kind of learning this and still trying to put piece in this piece together but you have all these other controls that we're doing with our header with the label and the rectangle that are part of the canvas side of power apps versus the custom form side of power apps so there are scenarios to where you can intermix the two or height you know do a hybrid of the two and I'll show you that here in a second and we're going to use that for a few elements so the first element we're going to use is let's go ahead and add in a another label so let's just do insert label and we're just going to go ahead and push this over to the side and this label is going to hold our status right and then we're going to add another label and this is just going to really be a true label and say the word status so let's just do status here colon and we want this aligned to the right so let's just change the alignment from left to right that's going to right justify that and let's uh, let's just make the status a little bit bold so it kind of pops because that's the most important piece of that conversation and now what we can do let's add in another um, rectangle and make that like a background color to kind of highlight the status right so let's just do rectangle here butt it up against that piece then go to it hit, tell it to send it back and that's going to make that pop so let's change the color maybe a, a off white or off gray okay and that's going to that's going to handle that piece so now what we need to do is tell this label which is like a canvas control to pull in the value from IR form control right which is our form edit control and the value that we want is from this status card so if I select status I can see the data card here and then it has some other properties but the most important property if I open this up a bit is the data card value 10 right so I want to rename this because I want to use this in the formula so I want to make sure it's easy to identify and I'm gonna prefix this with an E because we're in the edit form versus the new form versus the view form so edit and just put status value right and now what I can do for this label which is outside of the form control I can select the text property on this label and have it display the status value and you just do e status whatever you named it and because it's a drop down it's selected and this is something that you just pick up over time or watching videos dot value because it's a drop down you have many different options so you need the selected item from the drop down and then the value that uh, that item represents okay and that's going to give us our status field so to see this in action just to make sure that this works uh, by default is, is there's nothing selected so I will hit approve and you will see it's approved here I will hit ship and you will see it's shipped there and then submit and so on and so forth okay so now this is wired up and working as expected but again we don't want our user to modify this so what we want to do is hide this data card so if I go in here in the visible option let's just go ahead and turn it off and that's not going to break my um, that's not going to break my formula that's reading that value right if I delete it is null and void because it's going to look for a control name that doesn't exist but if I hide it I get the best of both worlds I can use it but then I can hide it from my user from being able to change it um, within the form okay so let's go ahead and get our description a little bit more real estate uh, let's see here let me select the form and I just want to scooch everything down and get my description enough breathing room like that okay and just be careful you don't want that double scroll bar so make sure you're adjusting that to where you don't have a double scroll bar everything else looks looks fantastic I mean you can come in here and kind of resize these guys 
because my drop down for location doesn't need all that real estate my cost doesn't need all that real estate so now we're good to go okay so just like that I have a nice custom uh, intuitive edit form and then I have uh, something that's intuitive for the new screen and now I can go and do something fancy for the view screen now the question may be is like why do you have the status on edit but not on new well if it's brand new the status doesn't matter because it's going to default to submit the status really only matters once the item has been submitted and it's going through our process so that's why in edit it makes sense to show the status and then view we want to show the status as well so we went through all that work to do that for edit and what we can do is instead of reproducing all those steps is just select everything control C go to our view screen control V and then just kind of adjust that down and all I'm gonna do is just kind of adjust this Heather a little bit and just push these up right and this is all UI me being um, okay you know just trying to be perfect right so um, okay so th so that's our status and it's reading and it's reading from the edit screen which in our scenario is fine but if you want it probably makes sense to go ahead and just to kind of keep things uniform you can go ahead and add do the same trick just add that status field to this form control for view and let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna just add it the status field for view right and here in the data card, once this is selected, just rename this value to V for view status value. And now what I can do is come up to my label and where we're displaying the text, I can now pull this from the view field. Now again, you don't have to do this because in the end, it's the same SharePoint column right that's going to hold that that value so if you read it from the edit screen or if you read it from the view screen it's always going to be the same value they'll never be different so it really doesn't matter this is more of keeping things uniform and, and trying to minimize the confusion if someone else is coming behind you to maintain this this form okay so instead of so instead of the e status value we want to change this to the v status value everything else remains the same selected value so on and so forth okay and then we come up to this card we hide it because we you know this is view mode we don't want them there's no reason to to show it twice they won't be able to edit because we're in view mode uh, but there's no reason to display it twice all right and then we have our photo and as of right now this seems like this is wired up correctly but I think if we go into edit the form and if for some odd reason if we deselect this and re have to reselect it we can never get that form view back right we can never get that form view back so we are we're always I'm sorry that photo view back so before we deselect and reselect it we had the nice photo and it was showing and of course we could make the adjustment to, to show that but that was only a caching scenario meaning that if you know two months later down the road if we deselected that photo field for whatever reason and re-add it we would never get that thumbnail view back because we changed our site column from photo to hyperlink so it's going to be looking at the hyperlink version of that so let's get in front of that and let's deal with the hyperlink version and in order to show the photo we have to do a very similar trick that we did with the status so we just come down to the, the photo data card which is selected go down here to the data card value in this scenario is value 12 let's rename this to e photo URL all right and that is because I need to use this in the formula and once I have that now I can use my form control let's just scoot that down and we're going to add in a image control from the canvas side right so this is like a canvas control and then let's just maximize it to about right there change our position to fill and now for the image property for this image control we need to use that V photo uh, oh why did I, oh, this should have been V photo sorry let me rename this because I'm on the view form 
All right, so now let me select this and now I just do vphoto URL dot text, right? And that's going to give me, um, it's going to hydrate the, it's going to bring in the photo URL for that particular data card, okay? So now we have that piece of it. Um, we're not, are we displaying the photo card still? Yep, so we let's hide that. Again, you can't delete it because you're using it in the formula, but you can hide it to achieve uh, very similar results. And now all we need to do is to expand out this photo field and maybe the description field so that way they can read more of the description. And then let's put the um, cost and location on the same line. Just squeeze this up until it jumps to the second line. Uh, squeeze you just you have to keep playing around with this until you get it to a point where it's all in the same line like that okay all right so now let's go here let's edit this guy let's make sure this is set for multi-line text uh, let me all right so that's multi-line text and then let's squeeze this down give it more real estate and it seems like I may not be able to get rid of the scroll bar here, which is fine, because I have to make room for my for my photo. All right. Okay. So now, now that we made all those changes, let's go ahead and push it up to SharePoint, and let's just confirm this is working as expected. And again because you have those three screens you can really take advantage of those three screens and do some very fancy things uh, because you have full control of those three views so here is our oh so that description so that'll be interesting if this will only grow when you need it that's why I kinda like to put the description at the end because you get that extra white space even though you don't need it and it pushes down those other um, field elements but we can go in and adjust that and then for our edit mode, we look, it looks good. And you can't change the status, which is good, but you are reading out the status. And then for the new screen, we can come up here and put in test one, two, three. Let me just go to Amazon real quick. Let's go here and just add an item. So let's just go, I don't know, let's just do a uh, desk as an example something more office oriented. So let's just grab this desk here. This is going to be our title. Just control C, paste that in. This is going to be our photo. Let's right click, copy image address, paste that in. And then the cost is, what's the price for this guy? 94.87. And then the description we just want to copy all of this right and this is one of those things like when you build these forms it's probably best to go through the process of filling it out and then you kind of get a sense how things flow and for the end user you want this to flow without too much friction right so now that we have that in um, yeah let's go ahead and push that location and cost up above description but outside of that and if you hit your edit mode you can see this is easy to adjust and change so now if I have to come up here and change the image like oh I didn't want to use that one let's just use this one that has the dimensions copy the address here paste that in save that off now let's take and see a look and see what this looks like so you can come in here you can adjust the images a lot of things that we were un unable to do before and now my status is submitted because that was our default value you know all and all that is is a choice column for status it's a choice column for status and the default value is submitted now I added that choice column that status column after these other guys were created which is why they don't have a status and you should be able to easily fix that by going into quick edit and because we only have a handful of items like less than 10 or whatever I can just grab this corner right and then just adjust that down and that's going to go ahead and populate all those guys with the status field 
All right, I think you kind of get the gist of it, all right? So you can go through there and get that updated. But that's one of those things that you have to be aware of when you're adding a field post, um, especially something that should have a default value when you add that post data or once a, a list been in use for a while, you kind of have to catch things up. And if it's only a handful of items, that's, that's simple. But if you're dealing with hundreds or a couple hundreds, then it becomes a little bit problematic and you kind of have to deal with that in a different way. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, oh, let's just, and I, I'll, I'll walk through this, but I think you know this by now. But if we wanted to adjust the, uh, the description field to the bottom for um, the view mode, now we can just come in there, adjust that one form control for the view screen, right? So just go into view screen, and what we want to do is just move this guy down, and, we're, and that's done. Right, and that's done. Go ahead and push that back up, and you're rocking and rolling. So it's that simple. Again, I like this model because it allows you to have full control of the different screens, and you can do something really tricky, as you saw that you know we were able to bring in the canvas control to represent the image, right, the photo. We were also able to bring in a a double label control or two label controls to represent the status. And, and that way you can show something and keep it read only and you can have more control of how you want to position that on the form without being confined to that stack format within the form control um, again breaking these out into multiple screens really help you with that oh let me show you one other thing so if you go into customize form because I, I saw this in the comment field and actually I was having a conversation with someone who actually watched this video and the the, the feedback was is Power Apps really meant for uh, displaying forms in uh, in the browser, right, on the desktop? Because it seems like this is more of a mobile view for for a phone, right, for a vertical phone. You can adjust these this canvas to any size you want. So if you go into the file menu and then hit App Settings, and then where it says Screen and Orient um, Orientation Size, you can go into like a custom, right. And just tell it like, oh, okay, I want this a thousand wide, and I want this to be three hundred high, right? Whatever your form requires, and you're going to get this warning that says, hey, you adjusted this field. Uh, some of your fields may not be displayed or be truncated, or whatever. Uh, you just hit OK with that, and then hit back on the on the button, and now you have this now this huge horizontal view right to represent your form but of course you can grow this out however you want and then it's all a matter of adjusting this guy right so for this example here and I totally just screwed up my form which is fine um, I can now go into the form control hit select and then start to play around with how many columns do I want to display on a single row and you see how it tries to adjust those out um, I obviously have some work to do here because now my description field is way longer than than I need it to be, yada yada yada. But you know that's just one of those exercises that you're not. I, I just want to explain or make it clear that you're not conform or confined to um, mobile device dimensions, right? You can come in here and make this as large as you want uh, to represent the form that you need to fill out. Now in the next video because your canvas size you know obviously just and this is more of a user experience thing if you have a form that has many fields you probably want to chunk those out into tabs or chunk them out to different modules and then build navigation to navigate between them and we'll kind of talk about that in the next video all right so that's it for this video this is how you can really customize those three screens take advantage of um, you know by blowing these out to three different screens take advantage of that and give it different layouts to make it user friendly uh, for the user as well as especially when you're from new to edit those fields that you want them to fill out initially but after it's submitted only make the other ones uh, visible to be manipulated okay that's it for this video see you in the comment section and i'll see you in the next one take care